shocker of shockers. Who besides me and anyone else with a brain could have possibly seen seen this coming? Uh, who besides besides those of us with IQs above that of a of a soggy paper towel could have ever predicted this outcome? The noose in Bubba Wallace's garage was not a hate crime. Uh, it was just a rope, a rope to pull the door closed. That's it. Now, before we get into this, let's let's reminisce just for a moment. Reminisce uh, about the old days, back in the good old days, back way, way back, two days ago, in fact, when NASCAR came out in an emotional su- show of support for Bubba Wallace, and the other drivers escorted him around the track as he wept openly before Talladega. And then NASCAR put together this inspirational video. Let's just remember this video again. Watch, watch this. All of that over a garage door. All of that because Bubba Wallace was afraid of his garage door. We are truly living in an idiocracy. I, it, it, now, here's the statement from NASCAR. Um, in this, this, remember, after they spent the previous day condemning this racist, vile act and rallying around Bubba and putting together inspirational videos with the, with the inspirational music in the background. And then they come out with this and they say, the FBI has completed its investigation at Talladega Super Speedway and determined that Bubba Wallace was not the target of a hate crime. The FBI report concludes and photographic evidence confirms that the garage door pull rope fashioned like a noose has been positioned there since as early as last fall. This was obviously well before the 43 teams arrived. And um, and we're given the garage assignments. We appreciate the FBI's quick and thorough investigation and are thankful to learn that this was not an intentional racist act against Bubba. We remain steadfast in our commitment to providing a welcoming and inclusive environment for all who love racing. But the left and the media, NASCAR, Bubba Wallace, all of them, they're not they're not ready to let this go. They're not gonna they're not gonna let this go so easily, okay? And they certainly won't admit that they were wrong. That's not gonna happen. And even more certainly. They're not going to apologize. They will not apologize to those of us who were skeptical of this story and were right and were accused of racism because of our skepticism. No one's coming back around. No, I was, I was, I was called a racist many times over the last few days. Well, I'm, I'm always called that, just like every other ist and ism I'm called. But uh, especially the last few days because I was immediately skeptical of this story and I was told that's because you're a racist. I, I'm I'm here. I'm available. If you want to come and apologize, uh, you want to send me a letter, send me an email. I am ready to accept your acts of contrition. If there are any takers, surprisingly, there aren't. Wallace said earlier yesterday that skeptics were simple-minded. He insulted us, called us stupid. D- do you think he's apologizing for saying that? Is he going to at least apologize for that? Is he at least going to say? Hey, you know, uh, maybe it, it, it turns out you weren't very simple-minded. I mean, it, 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 it turns out you were actually on to something. In, in fact, you guys uh, who, who were not even there and didn't have all the information that I had, you were able to figure this out in 10 seconds. So, wow, not only are you not simple-minded, but compared to me, you're a genius. You guys are like, you should be private, private eyes. You're, you're detectives. You were on the case. No, he's not going to say that. He just called us idiots and is going to leave it at that. And he's still making himself into the victim. Wallace went on CNN last night for, uh, well, I'm not going to call it an interview. It certainly was not an interview. Uh, it was more of a therapy session. Don Lemon, the alleged news anchor, didn't ask any prying questions or really any questions at all. Didn't try to get to the truth. Never does, of course. Instead, he just he just complimented and soothed Bubba and told him how wonderful he is. In fact, uh, I you know I watched this for some reason I subjected myself to it because I'm a I'm a masochist I suppose, but really Don Lemon did most of the talking and he he spent the whole time just telling Bubba nobody blames you this isn't your fault you're a great guy you know we all understand where you're coming from if if the media was capable of embarrassment they would be embarrassed by that sickening spectacle. Um. And Bubba agreed, by the way, 
Of course. Bubba agreed that he's a wonderful guy and brave, and he said so many times in so many words. I uh, kept talking about how I'm, I'm, I'm still standing up. I'm not going to let this stop me. <laughs> it's a garage door opener. What do you mean you're still standing up and you're brave? I'm not going to be shut. Sure. They're not going to stop me. No garage door is going to stand in my way. Um, but here he is at the very beginning, because he's still making himself a victim. Here he is at the very beginning, beginning of this uh, faux interview, saying that uh, he's still the victim. You know, he's not the victim of a hate crime, but because there wasn't one. But now he's the victim of people who doubted the hate crime, even though the doubters were right. He's still the victim of them. Watch this. I'm uh, I'm pissed. I'm, I'm I'm mad because people are trying to test my character and the person that I am and my integrity and. They're not stealing that away from me, but they're just trying to test that. And uh, as a person, Don, that doesn't need the fame, doesn't need the hype, doesn't need the media, I could care less. I could give two craps about that. Um, but to, to sit there and, and read, and that's my problem. I'm reading too much into it and, and investing too much media? time into it. I am. I am. Don't, I'm, don't, I'm, don't, don't. I know. Do I know. I know. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying hard not to. And, and after tonight, I'll probably turn my phone off. Uh, unfortunately, until about 7.30 in the morning where the interviews start back up again and we get to it all over. And then, and then so we have that. Uh, he's still a victim. Later on, he insists that it was a noose. He doubles down and claims that, you know, he's, it, it was still a noose. And he's never in his life, never in his life, has he seen a rope with a loop on it hanging in a garage. Watch. I've, uh, I've been racing all my life. I've, we've, we've raced out of hundreds of garages that uh, never had garage pools like that. So people that want to call it a garage pool and put out old videos and photos of, of, of knots being um, in, uh, in, in, in their, as their evidence, go ahead. But from the evidence that we have um, and that I have, uh, it's a straight up noose. The FBI has stated it was a noose over and over again. NASCAR leadership has stated that it was a noose. I can confirm that I actually got evidence of what was hanging in my garage over my car around my picker guys to confirm that it was a noose and never seen anything like it. Never seen it. Never, ever. Couldn't, couldn't possibly imagine ever seeing something like that. Um, and, but the left also, as I said, is not ready to let this go. Here's Al Sharpton calling for further investigations into the potentially racist garage door. We should take it as good news that someone didn't place it into his stall specifically as the only full-time black driver in NASCAR who pushed to have those Confederate flags removed from NASCAR events. And NASCAR did take that step last week. But it does appear there was a noose, as the FBI is calling it, placed in that garage last fall. The FBI identified it as a noose. NASCAR uh, said it was a noose or went along with the FBI's characterization it was a noose. So the question is, even if they did not know that Bubba Wallace was going to use that stall, why was a noose in the stall? It's clear what a noose represents. And I think to to go whether or not they knew that sooner or later the one black driver would use that stall really doesn't answer why it was in the stall at all. And then did someone know that it was in the stall when they did belatedly assign Bubba there. So I don't think this answers a lot of questions. And clearly from what we just saw of Bubba Wallace, it does not seem he, who is the victim and possible target in this matter, seems to be satisfied with this. So I do not think that we've seen closure in this particular uh, inquiry. Okay, there's a bunch of other stuff like that from the left and the media. Uh, you know, oh, it still might be a hate crime. Uh, why was there a noose there in the first place? Even if it wasn't a hate crime, it still could have been. So we had a valuable conversation that we needed to have. We should thank Bubba for that. Bubba's innocent in this. He didn't know, you know, that it wasn't a, a hate crime. It was reasonable for him to interpret it the way that he did. And the excuses go on and on and on. Thank you for tuning into The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to give it a like and a subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.